In this Lightroom tutorial, let me show you how we can add depth to our images with a bit of masking, turning this raw file into this final image. If you want to follow along as always, you can find a link to download the raw files in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Since this is a very contrasty scene, we are working with an HDR file. This means we're going to merge the HDR first. So down here in the film strip, select all the images and right click on one of them. Go to photo merge and choose HDR. We're not changing anything here. Once the preview has opened, make sure auto align is checked and then hit the merge button. And with the HDR merging out of the way, we can start working with the basic adjustments because we have to do those before we can start shaping the light of the scene. So let's open up the basic panel. With the basic adjustments, I want to kind of lessen the overall contrast and preparing the image for upcoming targeted adjustments. So let me first change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. You can see this will already lessen the contrast by making the darkest areas of the image brighter. Then I'm also going to bring up the exposure very gently. And at the same time, I'm going to drop the highlights. Again, this will lessen the contrast but it will also help reveal more details in the brightest areas right at the top of this image. So let's bring the highlights down quite a bit. I do want this image to be on the darker side. However, we can see there is already some clipping in this image going on right here in the foreground. And we can fix that by bringing up the blacks slider, again, lessening the overall contrast by doing so. But Lessening the contrast by increasing the blacks also helps introducing some kind of soft look to this image. And for a foggy scene like this, this works really, really well. Now, before we start losing too much contrast, what I want to do is to just slightly bring down the shadows. We don't have to worry much about underexposure since we have raised the, the blacks. So dropping the shadows, we shouldn't have any issues. All right, this is looking much better already. Now with the basic exposure adjustments out of the way, what I want to do next is to work on the white balance for a moment. I already know I want to have some very subtle blue color cast for this image, making everything look a bit colder without making the colors look too unnatural. So what I want to do is to bring down the temperature just a little bit, giving this image a hint of blue. So right around here looks good to me. Okay, then let's go through the presence tab really quick. I want to have very sharp details. So that's the reason for me to bring up the texture just a notch like this. At the same time, I want to improve that fogginess of this scene by bringing down the clarity. And of course, we can also bring down the dehaze to make this effect stronger. And by doing this, we will create some very mystical light for this scene, which looks great. Also, I'm going to bring down the vibrance because I want the scene to be rather desaturated. All right, and there we have it. This is our image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. And you can see exposure wise, it looks much, much better with less contrast overall. We have a lot more details in the shadows and in the highlights, and we do have a much better looking white balance as well. So now let's talk about adding depth to the image. And as always, with precise adjustments like these, we want to start things in the masking panel. Looking at this image, you can clearly see areas where there are lots of shadows and areas where there is a lot of light. Take the floor in the foreground. This area is super dark already. We can emphasize this by using a linear gradient. I'm going to cover pretty much all the floor in the foreground. And what I want to do is to make this area slightly darker without introducing underexposure. So I think I'm going to first add a bit of contrast. As you can see, this will ma help make this area darker. At the same time, I don't think it's dark enough. So what I want to do as well is to very carefully drop the shadows. Again, we don't want to introduce underexposure, so I'm paying close attention to the Instagram, but this is looking really, really good. And this mask already helps focusing the viewer's eye more on the subject of the image by taking out some of the details and uh, some of the brightness from down below. This was a very simple mask to use, but now let's do some more advanced things. Right here on these three pillars in the center, we can see a lot of light and shadows with which we want to work, especially right here, this edge between the light background and the dark left side of that pillar. 
this is what we want to make stronger. But how can we make such precise masks in Lightroom? The answer is really simple. We are going to use the objects selection mask. And here, just make sure instead of the brush select mode, we want to use the rectangle select mode. And with this active, all I need to do is I can simply draw a rectangle around a subject like this. And Lightroom will create a really, really good mask for our pillar. Now, of course, we want to either change the lights or the shadows, not both at the same time, because that wouldn't make any sense. So we need to further adjust this mask. This means I'm going to subtract and I'm choosing a linear gradient. And with that linear gradient, I'm trying to take out all the shadows of this pillar from the left side. So something like this. Also, the bottom part of this mask doesn't really look good. So I'm also going to take this out using a linear gradient. And what we're left now is we have a mask that targets only the lights of the pillar in the center. What this means is we can now bring up the exposure and we could also bring up the whites. Let's also add some clarity and some texture. And what this does is we are basically dodging the highlights of this pillar and by making the difference between shadows and highlights stronger, we are creating more depth. Let me turn off this mask so you can see the difference from before to after. Now you can see the light is really only on the far right side of this pillar. So we might want to adjust the first linear gradient, which is with subtracting a bit from the left side. I'm going to take it a little further to the left. So now more of the light of the pillar will be affected. Let me turn off this mask once more to see the difference from before to after. That's a big impact. What I want to do as well with this mask is I want to introduce back some white balance temperature because these pillars usually look a little more yellow in nature. So I'm going to bring back the temperature, introducing more of that warmth, just like this. Wonderful. Now this way we can work our way through the image and targeting the other pillars in the background. So again, let's create a new mask choose the object selection mask. And I'm creating a mask right here for the pillar in the background. As you can see, it's creating another pretty solid selection. But again, we need to modify because we only want to target the highlights. So let's say subtract linear gradient, and I'm taking away all the shadows of this pillar. And also I'm taking away the bottom part like this. Awesome. And again, we want to dodge the highlights of this pillar. That means we are going to make this area brighter. So I'm going to start by bringing up the exposure very gently. I'm also going to bring up the whites. And again, we want to bring back some natural colors in here. So I'm going to bring back temperature. Okay, that's looking good. Now we can already see I'm doing way less adjustments than to the pillar in the very center right here. That's because the pillar in the background is kind of already in the fog, which means there's already less contrast because of that fog. And we want to keep it natural. So if we would add more contrast, it would look more unnatural that way. So the further back we go in the image, the less we want to change things. Let's keep on working on the third pillar way in the back. Again, I'm using the object selection mask, draw a rectangle around that pillar. Again, we get a super nice selection. I'm going to modify it once more using a linear gradient, subtracting the left side of that pillar and a little bit from the bottom part as well. Okay, then let's increase the whites to make the highlights stronger. And again, add temperature to make the stone look a little warmer. Perfect. Now we have worked on the brighter side of these pillars, but of course we can also do the opposite and work on the shadows. Let's use another objects mask for that pillar in the foreground. And since we want to target the shadows, this time I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, getting rid of all that light from the pillar. And again, I'm also subtracting from the bottom just to have a more natural fade between the mask and the rest of the image. So now that we have targeted our shadows, what I want to do is to just make them darker by bringing down the shadows slider. 
I'm going to drop it quite a bit, but as always, I'm paying close attention to the histogram to not introduce underexposure. We just want to make the contrast stronger. And that's already enough. Let me deactivate this particular mask to see the difference from before to after. This looks so much better. And now you can see this edge between the highlights in the background and the shadows of that pillar. This edge is now much, much stronger and helps creating this depth effect. And of course, I want to repeat this for the other pillars of the image. So let's create another objects mask, select the pillar in the back and subtract a linear gradient coming in from the right. So only targeting the shadows right here. And again, I'm bringing down the shadows slider to make the shadows deeper. Perfect. Then one more time for the pillar on the left, subtract a linear gradient to get rid of the highlights and bring down the shadows. Okay, I need to modify this mask a little more because right now we can see where the mask is ending, but this is looking much, much better. Okay, now you can already see a clear improvement, but there are even more things we can do. For example, we can make the top part of the background brighter without affecting these three pillars. So let's create a linear gradient and we are targeting pretty much all of the bright background like this. Then let's say subtract and let's choose the objects selection mode one more time. And again, we're just making rough selections around the pillars to subtract them from the linear gradient targeting the background. So let's keep on subtracting. And I'm also going to use a linear gradient to subtract from the bottom part, just like this. Okay, now with this mask, what we can do, since we already have a very bright background up there, we can make it even brighter to improve the contrast between subject and background. That means I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm also going to bring up the blacks. And I'm going to bring up the contrast. Let me turn off this mask to see the difference from before to after. This mask in particular helps to separate the subject from the background in a very nice way. So now we're almost done with the masking adjustments. Just one more thing I want to do with that pillar in the very near foreground. I think this could use a little more detail. So let me create another objects mask targeting this pillar right here. And what I want to do in here is to add just a bit more texture to make the details a little more visible. Okay, and we could add a little bit of glow. So let me create a radial gradient right between the pillars, making sure to overlap each of them. And let me add another radial gradient right away on the other side like this. Now to add the glow effect, all I'm doing is to add a bit of negative dehaze and increase the blacks very slightly like this. Perfect. That's the image after the masking adjustments. So let me turn off all these masks so we can see the difference from before with a rather flat looking image to after. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. Let's open up the color mixer and I want to bring up the saturation of the warmer tones of the image. So that means I'm going to raise orange. I'm also going to raise yellow and I'm going to raise green. This will mostly affect the pillars, but also a little bit the floor on the foreground and the leaves in the trees. But it's a very, very subtle change, so it shouldn't be that impactful. Then let's also head into the color grading tab for some split toning. I want to specifically target the shadows to add a little more cold to the image. So I'm setting up the hue to a very cold color tone like this. And I'm very gently raising the saturation to have a hint of blue in the shadows. And finally, let's head down into the calibration tab. What I want to do in here is to simply bring down the blue primary hue a bit and raising the saturation a notch. Wonderful. Now all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's do this. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. I'm going to increase the details all the way up. That's something I do for all my images. Then we want to hold down the Alt key while we adjust the masking slider. So we can nicely target the subjects like this. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's the image after the Lightroom adjustments. 
At this point, if you want to add a little more punch to the image, what I like to do after some Lightroom editing is to make use of the Nick Collection plugin. Of course, this step is totally optional. I just think it's a great tool to improve images. So what I'm going to do is to right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Color Effects Pro 4. So this is a paid plugin, but it's really, really helpful for landscape editing. I use it pretty much on all my images. So what I want to do here is I'm going to use the Pro Contrast filter first. I want to bring up the dynamic contrast a little bit and maybe even correct contrast some more. But I want to get rid of correct color cast for this image. Then I want to add another filter, adding some kind of Orton glow on top of it using the classical soft focus. Here we want to choose a different method. I don't think the soft focus method works great for this scene, but the diffusion one looks much better. So I'm going with diffusion free and I'm going to bring down the strength quite a bit. Let's see, I really don't want to overdo it. At the same time, I want to make it darker. So I'm going to bring down the brightness a notch like this. All right. And I also want to add another filter. This time I'm using the detail extractor, which helps making these details in that pillar way more visible. But of course the default settings are way too strong. So I'm going to bring down the detail extractor slider right here. I'm also going to bring down the saturation. I don't want, want to affect the colors too much. I'm going to bring up the contrast just like this. All right. Now I don't want the detail extractor to be on the whole image. So I'm going to use control points, click on plus, and I'm going to create one right here on that pillar. Maybe make it a little bigger. And I'm going to add another one at the bottom part. Okay, maybe we can bring up the detail extractor some more, but that's looking perfect. So that's it for the new collection effects I want to add. All I need to do now is click on save. All right, and there we have it. That's the image after all the Lightroom adjustments. And I hope this little tutorial about adding depth to your images with Lightroom was helpful and interesting. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions about the editing, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.